Hello, computer science geeks. Welcome to one of your very first Java videos. We're going to cover JVM. I'm going to cover a bunch of things, uh, such as some jargon that you'll get with Java. Uh, the main takeaway is what a JVM is. So first, I'm going to start off with a program. You guys know what a program is, right? It's where you code. That's what we're here for. We're here to learn how to code in Java. So what you'll see is like here is my Java program. I have something called a class, if that's my keyword, and then here is my class name. Then I have something called a method here, and then I have a statement. Now my class goes from here all the way down to here, or it's the whole thing. And my method starts from here and goes to there. So these braces help define it. And then my statement is just one line. Each statement ends with a semicolon. So I could have multiple statements in here if I wanted to. I could just copy hello world multiple times and uh, put that in there, right? So now I have multiple statements. And if I wanted to have multiple methods inside of my program, I could have multiple methods as well. Of course, I wouldn't have it the same name. I might do something like other name there. Now I have my whole class that goes from here to here. I have my method that goes from here to here. And then each, and then I have another method that goes from here to here, and then I have statements inside of that. So what is that going to look like? Well, that's going to look a little bit like this, right? So I have my class that takes up this whole outer side, and then I have my methods inside of that, and inside of my methods I have statements. We call this nested, okay? So this is your basic overall structure of how a Java program looks. Now, in my Java program, I develop that inside of something called an IDE, Integrated Development Environment. This particular one is called JGRASP. I'm going to see if I can undo all this typing that I did and go back to my hello world. There we go. So I have my Integrated Development Environment, which allows me to edit my code here. I create a Java file. You can see the name of it is .java, right there, .java. When I'm done writing the code, I'm going to run it Right here, I'm going to run my code. And the first thing that it does, as you'll see right down here, first thing as it does is it compiles it. Where is it? Where does it say compile? Uh, it uses my Java development kit, and it creates a .class file. And I don't see the command in here. I guess I didn't output it. What it will do is it will compile the program and creates a .class file. So a .class file is right here. So I have my hello world.java, which is right here. You can see it. See, it looks really, uh, can I make it bigger? I can't, that's as big as it's gonna get. And then I have my class file, and it does, just represents it like that. If I were to actually try to look at that class file in an editor, here's my class file, open it up. It kind of looks like garbage, right? It just doesn't really look like anything. But when I compiled my code, I created my class file. Now in my IDE, when I hit this, it compiles it and it runs it. It does both those at the same time. It's going to compile it and then it's going to run it and it's going to provide the output right here. So I see everything. If I have an error in my compiler or in my code and I run it, when it attempts to compile it, oh, there it is, there's the command, Java C, there's my compiler. It compiled it and then it had an error. So the compiler found an error and my IDE represented it for me right here. So if I put that semicolon back to end the statement, then the compiler will succeed and then it will run the code. So let's take a picture, or let's look at a picture of what that looks like. So I want to uh, execute my code. So I write a program and then I have a compiler translate it into something that can run. And then when it doesn't work, I debug it. I didn't really show you the debugger. Um, that's another thing I can do inside of my IDE. These are the things you're going to do all the time. You're going to write code, you're going to tell it to compile and you're going to run it. These two steps right here are generally going to be done in the same step by just by hitting this running man. Or if we are in REPLit, there's a little play button and that will compile and run your code at the same time. And then uh, if you have any problems, you'll fix them and debug it and then you go back uh, by fixing it here and compiling it again. Let's look at some more pictures. So we have some jargon here. We have a JDK, a JRE, JRE, a JVM, and more. If you hear any uh, little barking going on, that's my dogs. They're, they're uh, slash um, 
playing and fighting. A uh, little puppy trying to play with the old dog. It's pretty funny. Um, so my JDK stands for Java Development Kit. We're not really going to learn about that. That just means everything. You'll see these names all over the place and you kind of want to know what they are. You'll have a JRE, which is a Java Runtime Environment. That's what you install on your computer in order to get everything to work. JVM is what they may quiz you on in the AP exam. So in the JVM stands for Java Virtual Machine. Uh, and I'm going to show you another picture of what that is. But that works with the class libraries together. Together with the class libraries and the JVM, that's what makes up your JRE. And then we have some tools like a compiler, a debugger, and another thing called a Javadocs. These are just things we do to help us code. So let's look at some pictures again. More jargon. Oh my goodness. Some microsystems back in 1995, they were the company that made Java. Uh, that's not really important for you to know how to code or compile it, but sometimes it's interesting to know where the language came from. We are going to learn Java because it is a pretty good introductory programming language. It is object-oriented, can be pretty powerful, and yet it's simple at the same time. It's got a lot of cool stuff, so uh, it's used all over the industry, and that's why we're going to learn it. Uh, Java class libraries, that's like chapter 8 or 9, somewhere out in there. We're going to learn a lot more about Java class libraries. That's just a lot of pre-existing Java code that we get to use. Okay, So you can forget this for now, just know that it's out there. We have a compiler. Oh my goodness, now here we go. We take our Java code, we're going to compile it into Java bytecode, which goes into our Java virtual machine, which then translates that bytecode into machine code or assembly language. And then that runs in our Java runtime environment. Oh, let's see another picture of that. Oh, this looks so much better. So I have my Java code. This is what I compiled. Hello world. This is so much more easy to read. Maybe not to you just at this moment, but in general, this is very easy to read. So I put that into my compiler. Okay, I used JGrasp right here. Okay, this is my JGrasp which called the compiler. So JGrasp is not a compiler, it's an integrated development environment. It does a lot of different things. Uh, but it called the compiler, and out of that came something called bytecode. Bytecode looks like this. Uh, it is code that can be run by a Java virtual machine that's put on multiple machines. I know you're going to ask me, why the heck does it have to make it so complicated? Well, there's some benefits. I'll tell you what those benefits are in just a minute. But I take my Hello World Java, give it to the compiler, converts it to bytecode. This code then I transfer to any computer in the world that has a Java virtual machine on it with a JRE. And then with that JRE, it translates it on the fly or immediately on the computer or the refrigerator or your light bulb or your watch or your phone or whatever it is you have Java working on. And it translates it into code that the machine itself with the registers and uh, the memory locations and the assembly language that is specific to the CPU on that machine, it translates it into machine language that it can understand and then it runs that machine language. So this is actually a similar language for what they call the x86 environment, which is what most PCs or all PCs run today. <laughs> You're crazy! I gotta see how bad that is, that noise on there. All right, so that, that's what that is. So why do we do all this? Well, because we want to be able to do something called compile once and run anywhere. So with Java, the idea is that you're going to compile it, or you're going to write the code just once, and then you can run it on your Mac, you can run it on your PC, you can run it on your phone, you can run it any place that has a Java virtual machine installed. Um, so that's the idea behind it. Um, just the machines need to, the, the physical hardware actually needs to, the manufacturer needs to create a Java virtual machine with a gen, Java runtime environment in order to make it run, and then it'll go. A lot of jargon in there, but I know you can go back and re-listen to this, look at the things to know. What's the most important takeaway here? The most important takeaway is this Java virtual machine. That will be the questions asked of you. What does it do? It takes byte code and translates it into the machine language code that the computer needs to run. Okay, So it translates bytecode into machine code. A compiler, what does it do? It translates Java into bytecode. Lots of translators here. All right, I hope that worked out for you. Hope my dogs didn't distract you too much. Give me another bark. Yeah, that's all I need to do. I need to tell them to bark when they want. All right, until next time.